Today I'll be showing you how to reinstall Grub and repair boot on Linux. Now, a few years ago, I made a video showing you how to reinstall Grub on Ubuntu using a tool called Boot Repair. However, that process only works on Ubuntu and Ubuntu-based distributions. The process that I'm gonna be showing you today will one, work on any Grub-based Linux distribution, which is pretty much every Linux distribution at this point, and doesn't involve the use of any third-party tools. So I'm just gonna be interfacing directly with the operating system. All right, so now I'm at my Ubuntu desktop right now. This is in a virtual machine, by the way, and I'm just gonna do something to break my Grub. So, Let's just say we go do something really dumb, like delete our entire slash boot slash grub folder. You don't want to do this, obviously. Well, let's just completely kill grub in this virtual machine and then reboot. Ooh. Okay, so now we've completely killed our grub. As you can see, we've got this grub rescue. So that means that there's a lot of stuff missing from our grub, and no amount of things we do in here will do much of anything. And by the way, if you get a screen where it just says grub and not grub rescue, then that means that there's only minor damage to your grub. Like, for example, you're missing your config file, in which case, you can just skip the timestamp that I'll have in the description. But what we're gonna have to do is boot into our Linux install media. All right, so now I'm in my Ubuntu install media. First thing I'm gonna do from here is do a sudo fdisk dash L and find our dev SDA. This is our main drive. It could be dev NVMe if you have an NVMe drive, but this is where we'll find our partitions. So now we've got a BIOS boot partition. We don't need to worry about that. An EFI system partition. And this is our main partition, our Linux file system. This will most likely be our biggest one. So now what we've got to do is first of all mount our root Linux partition, which in my case is dev sda3. So sudo mount slash dev slash sda3 slash mnt. I'm mounting it to slash mnt because that's the convention. And then if you have an EFI system partition, then you have to mount that. In my case, it's slash dev slash sda2. But for you, it'll probably be sda1. And then mount that to slash mnt slash boot slash efi. And if you have a separate boot partition, that will have to be mounted to slash mnt slash boot. And by the way, you can use a graphical application like GNOME Disks to find these device labels. However, in this video, I'm gonna be working entirely from the command line because I want this to be universal for any Grub-based Linux distribution. But anyway, now that we've got these partitions mounted, now what we've gotta do is do a sudo grub dash install dash dash root directory equals slash mnt and we gotta specify our device which is slash dev slash sda yeah now make sure you do not put any numbers after this because we're doing this to the device not the partition so sudo grub dash install dash dash root directory equals slash mnt slash dev slash sda in my case if you have an nvme drive it might be something like slash dev slash nvme just make sure you're doing it to the disk not to a partition and then hit enter there you go installation finished no error reported so now we can reboot okay so now we've got this screen where it just says grub at the prompt here. That means that now we've fixed our grub to the point where our system is bootable, even though it's not 100% fixed. So now we've got to do a few things here. 
So first of all, we're going to do an ls just to figure out our drives. So now you've got these devices here. Here, this is our device. These are our partitions. So now you got to figure out what what our root partition is because it, my root partition is slash dev slash sda3. I'm almost positive that my root partition is going to be hd0 gpt3. So let's test this by doing an ls hd0 gpt3, and the brackets do matter here, and then slash. And then there you go, this looks like our root partition. And if you have a separate boot partition, then you need to use your boot partition instead of your root partition. But anyway, I'm gonna set root equals hd0 gpt3. Now if we do an ls slash, yep, that's now our root partition. So now what we're gonna do is linux slash boot slash vm linas and then tab to cr files in my case it is slash boot slash vm linux depending on your distribution it could be vm linas dash linux or you might even need to specify a kernel version but in my case slash boot slash vm linas is fine and now we need to specify our root partition by typing root equals and then our root partition in my case slash dev slash sda3 and then enter and now we got to do init rd slash boot slash init rd and then tab to look at our files in my case it's init rd dot img so it actually just auto completed the right one slash boot slash init rd dot img so let's go use that. All right, and now we can just boot. And by the way, if you have full disk encryption set up, then your root partition might be something like slash dev slash mapper slash vg kubuntu dash root. All right, now we're back in our Ubuntu desktop. Now, important thing to know, this did not fix our grub. This is only a temporary fix. In order to make this permanent, what we've got to do is open up a terminal and do a sudo update dash grub to remake our grub configuration file. All right, there you go. Now our grub is repaired. And this is also where it'll detect other operating systems. If you, for example, have it, this installed on a dual boot with Windows, then it'll detect that, assuming you have the OS Prober package and it's active, which in Ubuntu, by default, it is. And by the way, if you're on Arch Linux, then instead of sudo update-grub, you would do sudo grub dash mk config dash o slash mnt slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg right from the arch iso and by the way if after booting with your newly reinstalled grub you get into emergency mode what this could be is that your uuid for your EFI system partition has changed. To fix this, we're gonna boot back into our installation media. All right, now what we're gonna do is lsblk-o UUID, and that'll print the UUIDs of our partitions going in order. So this is SDA1 and SDA2 for me. Your EFI system partition will probably be the first one. It looks similar to this. So now what we're going to do is copy that UUID. If you're not sure, you can do a sudo fdisk-l and figure out that, yep, SDA1 is our EFI system partition. So again, we're going to 
copy that UUID number. And then what we're going to do is mount our Linux file system. So sudo mount, in my case, it's dev sda2 slash mnt. And we don't need to worry about mounting the EFI system partition. But now what we're going to do is it do sudo nano slash mnt slash etc slash f's tab to get into our f's tab file. And then we're going to find the UUID for our boot EFI partition, which is down here. And we're going to get rid of that UUID and then paste in our new UUID and then press Control X to save and close the file. And then we can reboot into our system again. By the way, you can do this directly from the emergency mode prompt. I prefer to use a live ISO because that provides the advantage of being able to copy and paste the UUID. And as we could see, we're booted into our system. And that's it for this video. Be sure to give it a like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and see you next time.